Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction House, taking a look at some of the cool guns that are coming up for sale in their June of 2015 regional auction. Now, a previous time when I was here, I did a video on a Moore's Patent Rimfire Revolver. It was pretty cool, it was actually a remarkably nice gun, uh, a better design than I was anticipating, and it was made right at the beginning of the U.S. Civil War, and it was, frankly, an infringement on Rollin White's patent for the board through cylinder. It sold for a couple years, but then it became the focus of one of the more significant, one of the larger lawsuits um, of Smith & Wesson and Rollin White against patent infringing revolver designs. So Moore got shut down, uh, his pistol, most of his pistols that were still in inventory actually went to Smith & Wesson as uh, basically as recompense for copyright infringement. But that didn't end Moore's interest in making guns. Moore went on to devise a new type of pistol and this time he used a brand new proprietary type of cartridge so that he wouldn't infringe Smith & Wesson's patent. Now he did this in conjunction with a friend named uh, David Williamson, and the two of them actually made a very successful follow-up pistol. These were manufactured from 1864 until 1870. Uh, they made about 30,000 of them, which is really quite a lot. This was a little defensive pocket type of revolver, and in fact the only reason they stopped making them in 1870 was that the Colt company bought out uh, the National Firearms Company, which was the, the company that was manufacturing Moore's guns. Frankly, if they hadn't been selling really well, Colt probably wouldn't have bothered buying them. Um, a classic way of getting rid of a competitor, of course, is to buy them out and stop, stop their production. So I figured this being one of the other interesting proprietary cartridges from around the Civil War period, we ought to take a look at this one. So why don't I bring the camera back here? Let's check out the Moore's Patent Teat Fire Revolver. So the idea of the teat fire cartridge was to get all of the practical use of a rim fire without having to actually have the entire back of the cylinder open because that would violate the Rollin White patent. So what Moore and Williamson did is they came up with this cartridge that would load from the front of the cylinder. And the back of the, the cartridge was uh, kind of conical or uh, cylindrical and it ended in a little nipple right on the end of the cartridge and that, that nipple was full of priming compound. So we have a little hole in the back of the cylinder. That's what the hammer punches through, hits that little center full of priming compound on the cartridge and fires the cartridge. Now we have a gate here, which is in place to prevent a cartridge from pushing out the front of the cylinder under say recoil or just while being carried. You'll notice this, this cylinder location right here where we have this cutout, that's where you would load the cartridges and that's the only position where a cartridge could actually slide out. All the rest of these, even the ones over here, have at least a little teeny bit of the front of the cartridge held in place by a part of the barrel assembly. So now the other thing that this lever did was to act as an ejector. So you can see this hook end. When I pull this all the way down, that pushes into the firing hole. So once you've fired a cartridge, pushing in like this will pop the front of the cartridge out and you can pry it out and then reload. Now, of the 30,000 of these pistols made, only about 7,000 actually had this ejector lever. Most of them just had a little, basically, the piece that ended right about there, and all it did is act as a gate, a loading gate, so that you could allow access to the cylinder and then once, once this chamber, and then once the gun was fully loaded, you could lock it down and prevent anything from falling out. Now, to disassemble the gun, we have a little cross block, just like a percussion Colt. So let me pull that out. I loosened it up a little bit to make sure it would come out easily on video. Then, again, just like a percussion Colt, the front end comes off. Then we can pull out the cylinder. Now to start with, you can see that there are only small holes in the back of the cylinder, so that's compliant with the Rollin White patent. We have full size holes on the front, so the full cartridges load in from the front, and then you just have enough space to let the hammer through to fire the cartridges. It's also interesting to note that these, these curved blade-like elements here are for the hand to rotate the cylinder, and then these six holes are the cylinder stop holes. Most revolvers have a cylinder stop that comes up through the bottom here and engages in a notch in the side of the cylinder. This gun did not. Instead, it has a round peg of a cylinder stop right here 
that extends forward just a bit when the hammer is fully cocked. And that sits in one of these holes, and that's what locks the cylinder in position. This one's a bit worn and loose, but you get the idea. Uh, the hand is right here on the other side. That's what rotates the cylinder. You can see that it goes up and down with the hammer, so every time you cock the hammer, it pulls through one of these serrations, one of these cuts, and rotates the cylinder one position. So this was a pretty simple gun, pretty effective. You know, of all the workaround cartridges, the, the teat fire wasn't a particularly bad one. Uh, it did the job, they didn't fall out. And obviously it was successful enough to make Moore a fair amount of money and enough to ultimately have him bought out by the Colt company. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Of course, like all the other guns here, this is coming up for sale at Rock Island at the end of June. If you check out the link in the description text below, you can take a look at Rock Island's catalog page for this pistol. And it is part of a lot, so it comes with a couple other guns as well, and you can check out pictures of those as well. If you like it, you can place a bid. If you don't like it, well, there are actually three other teat fire revolvers like this in this auction. And uh, if you do a little searching in the catalog, you can find those and check them out too. Thanks for watching, and good luck.